Hello and welcome to my channel. My channel is dedicated to exposing what's to our lies, deception and cover up. My name is Marcy and I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for over 30 years. I was first contacted in the door-to-door -door ministry back in 1987 and I became a regular pioneer for 10 years. I finally left the organisation in 2022. This video is part two of my video series, Who or What is the Antichrist? In my last video, we established that the Antichrist may be a charismatic figure that appears in the future, who declares himself to be the returned Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ to the earth and will deceive the Christian community. We also learned that the Antichrist may be an individual, organisation or group of people who deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Now we learned that that was after his resurrection, that he came back in the flesh that he died in. And we also learned that the Antichrist may be people who display the spirit of the Antichrist by teaching false prophecies and false teachings about Jesus Christ. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, are they part of the Antichrist or not? And the simple answer to this question is yes, they are part of the Antichrist. But why are they part of the Antichrist, you might be thinking? Because they declare themselves to be Christians. One of the names of the Watchtower Society is the Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. Jesus' picture is featured in the publications. He also appears in videos um, that are produced by the society. And they often turn to Jesus' words in biblical talks, in meetings and conventions and assemblies. So doesn't all this prove that they are Christians? No, it doesn't. I'm going to talk about a veneer. Now, the table that I'm sitting at is an antique table. It's gifted to me by a couple I used to work for. And it is solid wood. It's made of fine wood and it's solid wood. Now, it, it's an antique, as I said. And um, it's worth a lot of money. But I also have a little coffee table that wasn't expensive at all. And it looks like it's made of fine wood, but it's really just a veneer. And what that means is that it's got a fine covering of wood on the top to cover inferior materials underneath. Now, a veneer can also be used to describe people who've got a superficial covering such as a cruel person, can be said to have a veneer of kindness. So they appear to be kind on the surface, but underneath, they're very cruel and bad. Now, the Christianity that Jehovah's Witnesses have and teach has a fine veneer of Christianity on the top. But when you look underneath, that's not what's there at all. 
because they teach things that are not biblical. This is the yardstick for Christianity and it must be measured up as to what it says in this book. So I'm going to just show you, as I said, I was a regular pioneer for 10 years and I had a lot of Bible students. And during my time of pioneering in the 1990s and the year 2000, um, the year 2000s, I was using the Knowledge That Leads to Everlasting Life book, which I've showed you before, but also we were told to get our Bible students started using this brochure. What does God require of us? And this brochure came out in 1996, I believe. It is, um, um, it is produced by the Watchtower Society. Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, 1996, it says there. And so this is what we were told to get people studying and, um, and then get them into the knowledge book. So this has got a chapter on Jesus Christ. So you can see a picture of Jesus walking on the water, teaching, and there's a baby. Now, it's not a great deal of information, to be honest. It does say that, um, the reasons why Jesus came to the earth. And um, describes that he was the firstborn son. Now it tells us in the first um, paragraph that Jesus is the only son that God created by himself. Jehovah used the pre-human Jesus as his master worker. So we know that that's not true. Because in the book of Revelation, it tells us that Jesus was the Alpha and Omega, like his father, the first and the last. So we know he wasn't the uh, created being. He was part of his father. So what does it tell us about him being about them being the Antichrist. Well, in paragraph six, I've just underlined it there. It says, Jesus died and was resurrected by God as a spirit creature. And he then returned to heaven. It's a very subtle statement. But that's not what the Bible teaches about Jesus, is it? Jesus was not resurrected as a spirit creature. He was resurrected in the flesh it, that he died in. He came back to earth as, as he was came back to life as the person he was. He resurrected many people. He resurrected Lazarus. Lazarus came out of the tomb as the person that went into the tomb. He resurrected Jairus' daughter. She was resurrected as the girl who died on the bed. She was resurrected as the girl who died on the bed. And Jesus Christ went into uh, death 
and he was put into the tomb and he came out of the tomb as the person who went in. That is the way it is. Jehovah's Witnesses have not been taught the truth about, about this because it tells us there, as plain as day, that he was... Jesus died and was resurrected by God as a spirit creature. And then he returned to heaven, it says. That is not the way we will understand the resurrection. Jesus resurrected people from the dead to show how he was going to be resurrected from the dead. So, I was talking to my fiance Paul the other night about this and as I say he's now come out of the Watchtower organisation himself but he was asking about well he said what about when they were on the road to Emmaus didn't Jesus appear in a different body showing that he was a spirit creature and I said, well, no. So shall we have a look at that? Because this is something that Jehovah's Witnesses point to as being proof of the fact that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. And not in the body, but he died in. So I'm going to read to, on this occasion from the Gideon Bible. And it's at Luke chapter 24 and verse 13 it starts. Oh, but before that, let's just have a look at what happened when the women went to the tomb after Jesus' death and what they were told by the angel that was, the angels that were there. It says that the men said to them, the angels, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. So, he was raised as he went into the tomb, as I've just said. It doesn't say that he, he was raised as a spirit. It said, he told them he would be raised again on the third day. And that's exactly what happened. He was raised again on the third day. And he was no longer in the tomb. So later, we know that he appeared on the road to Emmaus. So let's have a look at what it tells us there. It says, on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other and ev about everything that happened had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Was it a different person? Or was it Jesus? It says, but they were kept from recognising him. So, was it a different Jesus? Or was it that the Holy Spirit kept them from seeing that it was him? Because that's what the Bible says. They were kept from recognising him. It doesn't say that he was a different person. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? 
They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before the for God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And it says, and he said to them, how foolish you are. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him. So, the, it was them that weren't allowed to see him, not him that was a different person. So when I explained this to Paul, he could understand it, that Jesus was resurrected. It means, the word resurrection means literally a standing up again. Or a raising up again. So the Jehovah's Witnesses in teaching, in their publications, that Jesus was raised as a spirit creature is not a biblical teaching. And as I've said before, about the demon Bible of Johannes Grieber. It is in that Bible where the demons dictated their own Bibles, Bible because they said that the scriptures in our Bibles were wrong. That they said that Jesus was raised as a spirit creature. He wasn't raised in the body that he died in. And when they teach that, that is the teachings of a, the Antichrist. Now, what else do Jehovah's Witnesses do that is against the Christ? Well, I've pointed out in my other videos about what they're doing in the Live Forever book. When it's ever, it's a picture of Jesus Christ. They put these demonic sigils around him. I showed you in the New World Translation, the Black Edition, where they refer to him as in the book of Matthew as a baby, as an it. But when they changed the New World Translation to the Silver Sword, they 
it had been rumbled and they changed it to saying him. These are things that they do that are against Christ. And they don't teach the truth about him. They don't teach about the grace of Christ. They take away the worship that he is due, that we are told in the book of Revelation, that Jesus is to be worshipped the same as his father. But Jehovah's Witnesses don't teach this. They barely mention him. Yes, they may quote and say, Jesus said, but they don't really teach that through him, that is how we are saved. And we are saved by the grace or goodness of God through Christ. That is not what we are taught as Jehovah's Witnesses. And when we look at Jesus, the section on Jesus, there's more writing about the devil than there is about the Christ. So there's something wrong when they want them to teach us more about Satan than they do about the King and of our salvation, Jesus. So... I just wanted to show you something else. There is another teaching that is part of the Antichrist teaching that comes in this brochure under what is the kingdom of God. Let's put my glasses on again. Now it says that in this, in paragraph two, it says, God promised that Jesus would become king of his kingdom. When Jesus was on the earth, he proved he would be a kind, just and perfect ruler. When he returned to heaven, he was not enthroned as king of God's kingdom right away. It says, in 1914, Jehovah gave Jesus the authority he had promised him. Is that true or not? Did Jehovah give Jesus the authority in 1914 or not? Well, let's have a look at what it says. In Matthew 28, for the answer to this. I'm going to read it from the Silver Sword to make sure that we're getting the correct Jehovah's Witness viewpoint of this scripture. Now, I'm going to just read again what it says in this book, produced by the Watchtower Society. It says, in 1914, Jehovah gave Jesus the authority he had promised him. I'm going to the Bible. We have Jesus Christ. After he had been resurrected... It says, uh, verse, Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Jesus approached and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And look, 
I am with you all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. So, was it in 1914, as it says in this brochure taught by the witnesses, that, Je that Jesus was given the authority from Jehovah? Or was it, as Jesus said, before he returned to, e to heaven, while well, he was still on the earth, when he said, all authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. So, who are we to believe? The Watchtower Society or the Lord Jesus Christ? I know what I believe. I believe what the Lord Jesus Christ tells me to believe. And anything else is the teachings of the Antichrist. So, What are we to do to protect ourselves from false teachings? Shall we have a look what it says? In the silver sword itself, it says, I'm going to read from 2 Peter chapter 6 uh, chapter 3 and verse 16 it says speaking about these things as he does in his letters however some things in them are hard to understand and these things the ignorant and unstable are twisting as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their destruction you, therefore, beloved ones, having this advanced knowledge, be on your guard, so that you may not be led astray with them by the error of the lawless people and fall from your own steadfastness. No, but go on growing in the undeserved kindness or knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So, according to their own word, it tells us to be on our guard so that you are not led astray by the error of lawless people. A Jehovah's Witnesses organisation a lawless people. They are a law unto themselves. They teach what they want to teach about Jesus Christ. And they deny him the, the worship, the honour, and they deny you the knowledge of him. We are told in their own word to go on growing in the undeserved kindness or the grace, the grace of and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, I'm afraid that while ever you are looking in Watchtower publications like this one, or the ones that they have updated this with, that you're not going to be told the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
you're not going to be taught the truth about him. And neither do they allow you to learn to, to learn the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not, it says to him be the glory. They do not glorify him. They do not give him the glory. And they do not allow you to give him the glory either. It says both now and to the day of eternity. They deny him. And as such, they are part of the Antichrist. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you would find I found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Share the video with people who need to know about the truth about Jesus. Because you're not going to be taught it from the Watchtower Society. You need to get the Bible out without the Watchtower publications. And you need to study a credible version of the Bible. You need to put away the Watchtower Bible, because it leans towards the things that they want to teach you in their publications. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'll say bye.